Hello! In the episode 13, we are going to discuss with Gwenael Dauphin about the contribution of the investigation and the lab network on the Bumboro disease control. Please enjoy! So, hello, poultry industry friends. Welcome to a new episode. Uh, I'm going to, to receive today in the Turning of Experts, Gwenael Dauphin, that's responsible for maybe not so visible work for the poultry producers, but extremely important for the poultry industry. And she's going to share with us her knowledge and discuss with us how the poultry uh, scientific support and lab network can contribute for the control of the disease. So welcome to our welcome. conversation. And just to start our conversation and to, to give uh, the, the first inputs, can you tell us, can you share with us a little bit about your expertise or your background? Uh, so I'm a vet uh, and I also have a master in disease ecology and also a PhD in animal virology. Uh, at the beginning, I mostly worked in uh, public uh, labs in France, uh, in bacteriology and then in virology. And then I had the opportunity to uh, move to the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations where I uh, led a, a laboratory unit. And this, um, this unit actually um, uh, allowed to uh, co coordinate some influenza work uh, at the international level and also uh, coordinate uh, a big project belonging to a USAID uh, pro program on emerging diseases. So the, this unit was really uh, aimed at strengthening uh, laboratory capacities, especially in Africa and Asia. After that, I moved to SIVA, so I've been working with SIVA for five years, and I still work on project uh, management, on networking, uh, scientific networking especially, and uh, my title is Coordinator of Scientific Activities, and the first reason why I was uh, recruited by SIVA was to establish a network of laboratories where SIVA would transfer some uh, PCR uh, assays for vaccine take. Something that, uh, from my point of view, is really unique in SIVA is the scientific studies and investigation units that we have around the world. Can you disclose something about it to us? Can you? Tell us a little bit how it works. So these, uh, what we call SSIUs, are quite unique to SIVA, actually. And so we, uh, SIVA has established three SSIUs around the world. These SSIUs uh, are uh, located uh, ne next to produ these, uh, poultry production, and, uh, and they are usually associated with the R&D, uh, SIVA R&D and uh, vaccine production units. Uh, so they are made on the same uh, same uh, model and uh, they have the same missions. Uh, the first mission is actually to uh, run field samples collected by SIVA teams uh, in uh, on farms. And second mission is really uh, to uh, produce science on our vaccines. So we have one SSIU in the US, uh, in Lenexa, in Kansas, uh, which is led by uh, Robert Beckstead. We have another one um, in Hungary, uh, which is led by Ishvan uh, Kish. And we have one unit which is only two years old uh, in China, which is led by, by Frank Zhao. And actually these units uh, function together. I mean, they, uh, they cover different geographical uh, parts of the world. So China and US, would uh, these units would only cover their country while the Hungarian uh, unit would cover the rest of the world. And they actually uh, function um, the, the same way. And we run projects together, we validate essays together. It really looks amazing how, and I'm sure how it contributes for the poultry industry. And you, 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 you told us about the SIVA research centers, so what's uh, internally inside our company. Can you talk to us about uh, any kind of partnership with uh, institutes or universities, how, it, uh, how we, we are connected to them? Yeah, so actually uh, we need, as I said, we need to run uh, diagnostic uh, testing and we also need to run science on our vaccines. So for diagnostic testing, um, SIVA now has become a large company. We are very much uh, 
um, uh, service oriented to the customers. So it means that we do a lot of farm visits and these visits generate a lot of samples. It's uh, hundreds of thousands of samples every year around the world. And we only have these three labs to absorb those samples. So for this reason, um, uh, we, we had to uh, find other solutions to be able to, uh, to test all these samples because our three units uh, don't have the capacities for that. And another reason for uh, relying on local labs is that uh, customers also uh, want to have some neutrality in the testing of the samples to show the uh, good uh, vaccine take and to do uh, run post-vaccination monitoring. So for, for this reason, we, um, we worked on, uh, you know, on uh, transferring assays to local labs. Uh, so we started with a PCR assays for vaccine take. And for this, we have developed a whole prog a certification program and we have included uh, 14 uh, partner labs. In addition to that, we are also launching very soon uh, a serology uh, quality recognition program uh, with, uh, in collaboration with GD Animal Health based in the Netherlands. And actually, uh, this program will allow uh, to work hand in hand with the external labs which provide serological analysis to uh, SIVA services. And uh, the, uh, we will hand-in-hand uh, -hand work in a better standardized way. And do you believe that all this network that we are building and we have those connections, can we already cover all the countries around the world, or at least the countries that are producing poultry in a large scale? We actually discussed with uh, our, uh, the, the SIVA veterinary services team to see if they wanted to have just one lab in a given region covering the, the whole area or uh, more than one lab in a given geographic I mean, or continent. So uh, we, for example, in the case of Asia, the teams decided to only rely on one lab in uh, Southeast Asia, which uh, was selected in Malaysia, actually. And this lab actually covers several countries uh, of South, South Asia and Southeast Asia. In Europe, uh, the countries are more used to, uh, or people are more used to have direct access uh, to local labs, so we have a bit more labs in Asia and, uh, and, and etc. So, considering the uh, investigation units that we have and our partners, what kind of results that were produced in the last years? So, actually, if we just look at uh, diagnostics, we had thousands of samples which were uh, tested locally by, uh, by our partner labs for uh, PCR uh, vaccine take. And uh, so the results are collected from those labs, they are discussed uh, locally with customers, and they are entered in, uh, in a local, in a database and analyzed by our teams. So these labs uh, run the same uh, essays as we do in our SSIU labs. So this, uh, this is a really a win-win situation where we, we have the, the local labs uh, working on, on our, I mean, on the SIVA samples, and, uh, and results being discussed also with our SSIU labs. Then when it comes to uh, science, making science, as I mentioned, SSIU labs are also supposed to uh, produce scientific knowledge on our vaccines. And so we run most of our research internally in SSIU labs. For example, if we want to check uh, vaccine efficacy against uh, a new variant, or if we want to look at the duration of immunity, or if we want to compare the, the, the vaccine take uh, performance of a new Innovo uh, machine, a uh, new version as compared to a previous one, we would run these scientific studies. But in some cases, we like to also rely on external universities or institutes because the, the results are produced by another institute, so there's more neutrality in the result, or also uh, sometimes because we don't have the expertise or internal resources for that. For example, if we want to, um, to describe the uh, mucosal and cellular immunity elicited by some vaccines, we don't have the, uh, the capacity for that. Or if we want to run uh, modeling for um, immunity uh, development, uh, we, we don't run a lot of modeling internally or new essay development, sometimes we would rely on those institutes. 
And is it include the results from the collaboration with other institutes as well? Yeah, so actually uh, from the last, let's say, two years, some of the nice results we had was on uh, uh, on influenza, we asked the, um, we requested the uh, Belgium Institute uh, called Scienzano uh, to look at the uh, mucosal and uh, humoral as well as cellular immunity elicited by uh, a new vaccine that is being registered, which is called Newfland HVT, ND, and H9 uh, vaccine. So they, they uh, were able to show that uh, this kind of vaccine is able. Uh, to uh, elicit um, a cellular immune response for, uh, I mean, at the mucosal, humoral, and cellular level, and really characterize the, the processes that uh, are developed. That's one example. Another example is uh, a collaboration we had with Utrecht University in the Netherlands. Uh, they are quite uh, expert in running transmission studies, so looking at the ability of vaccines to block disease transmission. So we were able to clearly show that uh, vector immune ND is able to uh, just block uh, the, uh, the disease and the, uh, the spread of infections uh, within vaccinated flocks. Um, and these, these, these uh, results have been published. We were also able to uh, run some challenge trials to show that vector immune AI, the uh, HVT H5 vaccine, is able to, uh, to provide good protection against the uh, clade 2.3.4.4b, which is circulating in Europe and in the US. Another example is uh, a nice work we've done with uh, CIRAD, uh, a French center for um, uh, developing countries and uh, agronomy, uh, we were able to model uh, the immunity generated by vector immune AI and to compare the different vaccination uh, strategies, uh, applying the vaccine at the hatchery or inactivated vaccine later uh, on the farm. So. All these results um, have been produced in collaboration with the research institutes, and they are usually published, they are discussed. So these are very, uh, very uh, fruitful collaborations, actually. Thanks for watching the episode, but keep turning it for the second part of this conversation. Bye. <laughs>